And we're covering from verse 14 to verse 19. And it says, The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, curse are you more than all cattle, and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and thus you shall eat all the days of your life. And I'll put enmity between you and your you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise you on the head, and you shall bruise him on the heel. To the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your pain and childbirth. In pain you shall bring forth children, yet your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree about which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat from it, cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you will eat of it in all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it, will sh it shall grow for you, and you shall eat the plant of the field. But the sweat of the face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, because from it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. You know, we, we saw last week one of the effects of sin. We saw last week how great the love of God was and is to Adam and Eve. But God called out to Adam, Adam, where are you? Wanting them to repent. And yet, Adam and Eve did not. And then God said, who told you that you were naked? Again, Adam and Eve did not come clean. And they were finding excuse. They are saying, uh, Lord, we hid from you. Why? Because we were afraid. Because we were naked. But God said, Adam, you were not naked. Now tell me the truth. Adam wrecked. Adam refused to tell the truth. Then God confronted them. But did you eat? Tell me, Adam, did you really eat? From the, from the tree that I told you not to eat. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And I was saying, surely Adam would admit. Surely Adam would, would come clean right now because there was no more excuse. There was no more hiding from the sin. Yet despite that, Adam refused. He refused to confront his sin he was denying it despite the fact deep inside he knew he has offended God he has sinned against God and instead of coming clean he did exactly the reverse he accused God God it's your fault God it is your own doing because you allowed this woman in my life, now I have sinned. You gave, she gave. If she was not in my life, then I would have not sinned. And I was saying last week that sin makes God evil. When sin enters the mind, the life of a person, it corrupts the mind so much that the person now views God as evil. Not that God is evil, but sin in the minds, in our mind, corrupts our view of who God is. All of a sudden, a God that is good is now a God that is evil. All of a sudden, He's a selfish God. A God who does not care. A God that does not know. That was and is the effect of sin. It's like having cocaine enter the, 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 the life of your child. All of, all of a sudden, your child is now paranoid. 
towards their parents. Praning siya. And whenever the parents does something good, the child would rebel. In fact, in some cases, the kids would kill their parents because of that drug in their mind that has affected them. So that is the effect of sin. But you know, saying that is very humanistic. It's very us-centered. Because we're looking at what is the effect of sin in our life. We say sin does this, it makes us fall in. But the, the, what's worse about sin is not what it does to us, but what it does to God. The, the most vile thing about sin is that what it does to God. <coughs> sin dishonors God. Sin desecrates God. Now you ask Bob, how is that? How does sin desecrate God? You know, sometimes if you especially the Americans or yeah Americans and, and and Muslims right when they when they when they see a flag in um, let's say Libya being burned what happens the patriotic Americans gets angry why because it dishonors America. America naman is not really changed per se, but <clears throat> the desecration of the flag is a, is a desecration of America. That's why patriotic Americans would really get angry and would fight and would enter into a quarrel if someone um, dishonors the flag. Same is true with man. When man sinned, it dishonored God. All of a sudden, God felt distant. All of a sudden, the name of God is dishonored. Please go to Galatians chapter 1. Remember, when, when God created us, God created us in what? To be, He created us in His image and likeness. And what does that mean? <clears throat> that us human beings, we are to bear the very essence of God, the very attributes of God. You and I should reflect our lives should be a reflection of who God is. Because we are His ambassadors. And technically, if people want to understand who God is, they have to just look at Christians. In mankind in particular, but now in particular to Christians. Because now we are the image bearers of God. To the world and when God said that go and multiply subdue and rule the world go forth God wants his name to go forth as the image bearers as God's representative reflecting the attributes of God to the world so the, where, wherever we are people would experience the love the patience, the kindness, the goodness of God. Thus, in Galatians chapter 1, verse 24, Paul <laughs> says, And they were glorifying God because of me. Every life should be such that when people around you interact with you, they would be 
glorifying God. Or nowadays, you interact with some people, you don't end up glorifying. You end up in this, in this. Oh, man, I hate hanging out with that person. I get angry whenever I'm with him. I get upset. I get depressed. Right? But we are not meant to be such. When people interact with us, they should feel blessed. Because we are made in His image and likeness to reflect God. Nowadays, within the church, you know, and daming, sometimes some of the people in the church is almost like the people outside the church. You can't tell the difference. James chapter 2, verse 7. Do they not blaspheme the fair name by which you have been called? Romans 2, 24. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. And that's the sad part. Instead of Christians living a life for in people encountering them glorifies God. What happens nowadays is that people that encounter Christians are blaspheming the name of God. Kanyang ba ang Christian talaga? Ang forgiving? Kanyang ba talaga ang Christian? Lagi naninira? Are Christians really that way? They slander and gossip among themselves and cover it up with concern and prayer requests but in reality, they're just gossiping? Are Christians really like that? That they are really hot-tempered? And you go around, sabi ko nga eh, if you're living a life that is blasphemous to the name of God, I beg, don't go around saying that you're a Christian. Because you're blaspheming the name of God. I'm really, really offended on, on some people that, that walks around holier than thou, yet has a mistress. Wow, I feel offended. <clears throat> Though I'm not close to the man, I'm, I, he does not know me personally, but he comes, he goes around a, bump, a Bible thumper, proclaiming he's the defender of faith. And people were buying it. And I'm so insulted that the name of God is being blasphemed by him. And I found new meaning in Exodus chapter 20 verse 7. It says, You shall not take the name of the Lord, of the Lord your God in vain. For the Lord will not leave him unpunished who takes his name in vain. And sometimes we take it lightly. Yes, I don't curse using the name of God. Right. But your life <coughs> is blaspheming. Is using the name of God in vain. You don't have to speak it. Because we're living it. <clears throat> that's the sad thing that is the effect of sin in us we become a distorted image bearer of God not only does it corrupt us our thinking but worse it dishonors God that's what's bad about sin and now as we go into the passage, we see that there are consequences. Adam and Eve would have to face the consequence. The Bible says in Genesis, Galatians chapter 6, 7, 6 verse 7, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. <coughs> A man will reap what he sows. Don't think that your sins will go unpunished. Don't think 
but you can get away with it. Don't ever think no one knows. You know how I wish I could, I could, uh, maybe I could, but um, I was showing my, my kids a video yesterday. They found it funny because in the video, it's in my phone, in the video, was a CCTV. Na uso na CCTV, right? In the streets. And there was a there was a, a man with a broken motorcycle. And there he was trying to fix it. A man was passing by. He did not know there was a CCTV. And the video. The video, right? And 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 he saw the wallet was like showing. He picked it up. He was a pickpocket. Then when he was about to leave, he noticed there's a CCTV camera. And and he he covered his mouth. And he wanted to be sure it was CCTV camera, if it was really a CCTV camera. It was. And what did he do? He dropped it in the floor. And called them and said, hey, you dropped your wallet. Yeah. And I told my kids, guess what? Yeah, I showed it to them, man. Guess what? How sad, right? How sad that we don't realize that God sees all our moves. There's a CCTV camera, really? How sad we think he does not see. How sad that we, we think that we can escape it. The man was ashamed and was afraid of the consequence because there was a CCTV camera and he wanted to fix it. And us right now, we think that God is not really there. We don't realize that he was really seeing. And for some people, they don't even care. If he's watching. And we continue living our life thinking that we can escape the sins that we commit. In private, in our mind, there's no escaping. The Bible says God cannot be mocked. It's like saying, make no mistake about it. He will not be mocked. His justice will prevail. You will reap what you have sown. Maybe not now. Time does not make the promises of God invalid. It does not. Time. The passing of time doesn't mean that you've escaped judgment. He will not be mocked. We will reap what we sow. Whether you believe or believe it or not, either in this life or in the life to come, there is a camera. And from some of us, it will let us return the wallet. <laughs> but for others, they'll say, I don't care about it. Now, Adam, even the serpent, are now called. In verse 14, it says, the Lord said to the servant, Because you have done this, Curse are you more than all the cattle. You know, curse is a decree of doom by one in authority. And more than every beast of the field, on your belly you will go, and thus you will eat. On your belly you will go. You know, some people, I've heard this in the past. That, oh, therefore, the, the serpent used to walk. Because now on your belly, 
So, so what's that? They're tall servants walking around before and now they're cursed and now they have to crawl? No. It's comparing one that's on a dominant position like the, the, the serpent on the, on the, the goddess, Pharaoh's head. And a serpent that is put, put down, pressed down. <coughs> and when it says, thus you will eat, we know that, right? The, the, the food of the serpent is not soil. But it symbolizes that you will be made humble. It you will be humiliated. Go to go to Isaiah forty nine, please. Isaiah forty nine, verse twenty six twenty three says, "Kings will be your guardians." and their princesses, your nurses. They will bow down to you and their faces to the earth and lick the dust of your feet. And you will know that I am the Lord. Those who hopefully wait for me will not be put to shame. So w w when they say that the serpent um, will eat dust, it means that you will be humiliated as part of the consequence, the consequence that you will get for doing this, for tempting Eve. And it says, all the days of your life. I mean, that's hard, right? Sometimes we have consequences that would last a minute, an hour. But there's so some consequence says, that will last us all the days of our lives. And like with, whenever, the, whenever the servant would crawl on the dust, that crawling of his is a constant reminder of the crime that he has done against the Holy God. He would be crawling, he would be humiliated, and whenever he he cross, it reminds him of the sin he's done against God. And sometimes that's how sin is. Sin has eternal consequence. Some is temporal. But sometimes, you know, I always think, I always think of these people, and lately there are a lot were in road rage there's an altercation on the road cannot one car cuts another car the guy in front gets mad he steps down in anger and what does he do he shoots the guy 10 minutes of his life he couldn't control his temper all of a sudden his whole future is now wasted He has thrown his future out the window. For just a momentary pride, he has now, he has to suffer the consequence. And sometimes we have to watch ourselves, diba? Right? A harsh word that we've spoken, an action that we did, might have long-term consequence. You know, as it says all the days of your life. You know the serpent? In Isaiah 65, when God was saying, I will create a new heavens and a new earth, and there will be no more weeping, there will be no more crying, and labor will not be that difficult because I'm creating a new heaven and, and a new earth. And it says, the lamb, the wolf and the lamb will gaze together. But guess what? It says there, in the new heaven already, in the new earth, the serpent will still crawl. The curse given to the serpent 
is for all his life. Even in the new heavens and the new earth, he will still be humbled for that sin. And maybe, you know, maybe for a, for, a, for a husband who cheated a wife and the wife finds out, you know, there might be consequences wherein the wife will never have trust in the husband. So we have to realize that. That sin has consequences. Temporal and some permanent. Verse 15, it says, I will now, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. God said, there will be hostilities. There will be two combatants here. From now on, we're in that, we're in there will be a fight. Friends now has turned into enemies between the serpent and the woman. So bad that not only will you, the woman, and the serpent fight, your descendants will fight each other. Your descendants, descendants, descendants will be fighting. Away pamilya to. This is a family feud that will last for all generations. And it will be physical. It will be bloody. You will strike him at her heel and she will strike you at your head. What that you know some people says that says that the the heel strike is just a heel strike but the strike on the head is the mortal blow but you know technically the the reason why it's a heel strike is because the snake cannot jump and hit your head right it's just a practical way when in when a snake bites it's normally at the feet at the heel and you if you are going to attack the snake where would you normally hit him not at the tail he hit it at the head and he's just crawling. But the point here, the mortal blows <coughs> will be struck. Each one will try to each one will try to strike each other with a mortal blows. But we know the end in Romans 6:20. It says, The God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath his feet. The question here is this. How does the devil strike us at our heel? How does he do that? How, do, how does he do it? I think most of you know, individually, most of you know that the story about Columbine, right? Casey Burnell, wherein she, there is a classmate that gone cuckoo. <coughs> and what he did is he entered the, his school shooting and at the at the place where they eat Casey Burnett was there eating I believe she was reading her Bible and the crazy student went to, to her and said are you a Christian and she said yes and she, she got shot the thing is that's the way how the serpent today strikes us for us here in the philippines we don't experience that much the strike of the serpent physically but in muslims in muslim countries they experience that the strike of the serpent at the heel is experienced daily by the persecution of a lot of christians remember i shared before this this 13 year old kid in Indonesia attending a retreat and enters this mob of Muslims and they ask him are you a, a soldier of uh, are you a believer and he said uh, I am a soldier of Christ and he he cuts the hand and ask him again are you a believer of Christ and he continues yes I am a believer of Christ 
and he cuts the other hand in Indonesia. And there will be countless of stories that we hear, that we really don't hear honestly. But there are martyrs right now, Christians that are, 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 are called to stand for their faith. And the serpent will give a deadly blow to them. And honestly, tonight, I, I do ask for us to pray for them. For, to pray for the persecuted Christians that are being struck by the devil. Sometimes, we, it's a for, they're, they're the forgotten, forgotten uh, brothers of ours. Who are standing strong in their faith and are willing to give their life. And for us here, I, I keep on saying, God never ask. God is not asking you to give your life to Him. Oh, God is not asking you to die for Him, but to, to live for Him. So that's how Satan is striking individuals. Fortunately, not in our society. I remember, my, my sister knows this, that when I was a young believer... My parents threw me out of the house. Why? Because I was just attending Bible study. And my dad was so enraged. And I, but the problem is I couldn't help but attend. I couldn't help but attend. And I was persecuted by my father. You know, you guys, right? They're so fortunate. You can attend Bible studies. Attend where sabi bawal talaga. Really bawal. Now, in, 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 in society in general nowadays, how does the serpent bite at the heel of society? There is this pregnant teenager in America trying to hide her pregnancy and uh, all of a sudden she gave birth prematurely in panic she did not know what to do she got the kid and just threw it at the garbage some neighbors saw it and the baby was alive all of a sudden this girl is now uh, charged criminally for trying to kill the baby was born prematurely <clears throat> yet one two miles down the road another girl about the same age is also pregnant about the same and she she was hiding it also but instead she goes to an abortion clinic and if you visit at the, the dump site of a abortion clinic you see hands you see baby's feet you see you see different parts of the body the news would, would condemn the other girl, yet will defend the other girl. That's how Satan now tries to attack our society by influencing us through media to say that this crime is, is not a crime. It is her right to choose. That is the strike. And now the devil is striking us subliminally by what we watch, <clears throat> by what we hear. In a bigger context, the devil, Satan, is striking us in wars, in terrorism. These are the works of the devil trying to put fear and chaos in the life of man. Remember, serpent is the what? Is the animal of chaos. And, and, and now the Satan is trying to strike the heel of the world by, you know, I believe ISIS is one of them. One of the ends of Abu Sayyaf is one of them. So these are the big things that the Satan does. 
and trying to continually create chaos in this world, striking at Eve. But the Bible says that Eve will crush his head. The word, the word strike there, kasi, strike and crush is the same word. So Eve will strike her, his head. How do we do that personally? Naman? I remember attending a Bible study when I was single. Probably when I was 17 years old or something like that. Our Bible teacher every Wednesday, his name is Tom Rojas. Good guy. He always smiles. He would tell us the story about one day parking his car uh, near a coconut tree when he came back. A coconut fell, broke his car. And he would say it in a smiley face. Week after week, I would attend his class. And then one day, he said, Guys, can I ask a prayer request? Ah, yes, yes, yes. We're a small class. And he said, my brother was just murdered. <coughs> what? <coughs> yes. Please pray that we may find the person who murdered him. And week after week, he would update us on what's happening. <coughs> then one, so so yung aming Bible study, naging parang sus, suspense movie. May Bible study, but I want to hear the cheese. <laughs> what's happening, right? Then one day he said, guys, we found that, no? We found the guy. We found the guy. Please pray. He's now in prison. Please pray. I'll visit him. Okay, great. And uh, he visits the guy. Enters the cell. And talks to the guy. And he shared the gospel to the guy. After sharing the gospel. In fact, while sharing the gospel, the guy had to confess, right? Why he was in jail. So he told the story how he killed the brother. Not knowing that he was talking to the brother. <clears throat> after the after crying and confessing, he said he prayed and accepted the Lord. And after that, Tom was about to leave the cell with with a, a colonel now. He was done with the colonel, I remember. He did give, give the name the colonel. Oh, confident in him. But on the way out, the prisoner said, Brother, by the way, what's your name? He turned back and he said, Tom Rojas. The prisoner fell to his feet and cried and cried. And said, sorry, sorry, sorry. And, 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 and Tom <clears throat> pulled him up, hugged him, and said, I have forgiven you. That's how we strike back against Satan. Not with angry words. But the Bible tells us that if someone does, you know, we, we are to show love. The problem nowadays, when Satan strikes us, guess what? We want to strike back. Angrily. Bastos ka, babastasinin kita. It's how we do it. I remember, I think I shared this. There's a pastor right in America. We're in um, the white, the, the, the black <coughs> guy was so angered that there is this pastor in, in their area. And what he does is he he, he he makes graffiti at the church. Did, did, I, did I share this, right? And, and and what the pastor does every morning is he would just paint it. Next day or next week, there's a graffiti again. He would paint it. Next week, there's a graffiti. He would paint it, which enraged the guy. Ano ba si pastor? He just paints it. Uh, I know, I'll, do, I'll burn it. And he burned the church to the ground. They talked the guy, brought him in front of uh, the pastor, and the pastor said to the guy, you know what, kid? There's nothing that you can do for to let me stop loving you. 
And that kid was hit with that statement and he became a believer. We are to strike back. The Bible says he will strike us, yes. But we are to strike back by showing love, by showing patience, by showing kindness. Why? Remember, we are the image bearers of God. We are to reflect His goodness, His kindness, His forgiving, His forgiving heart, His patience. We are to do that. In the larger context, you heard of Campus Crusade, right? For Christ. They have a video. It's called Jesus. Done in 1979. Showed in more than 230 countries. Seen by 2, million, two billion people. <clears throat> they say. That's how... We strike back. Some churches, they have this, they, they have these uh, programs and trying to reach the gangsters of their place. Feeding programs, orphanages, all these things are done to strike back at the devil. And in so doing, proclaim the the name of God you know one of the most powerful way of evangelism one of the great revivals in the, in the past was through was through was through <clears throat> funeral services what happened before was that um, poor people cannot afford a funeral service so the Christians what they do they provide a coffin and they do the service for free and the only thing is, they just preach every night. What's the ministry? And that's how they try to combat the devil. So there is a battle going on in our life. <clears throat> knowingly, unknowingly. And we are to be aware of that. And we are to take every opportunity that the devil gives us. Not to fall into his temptation, but to strike back. By returning anger with forgiveness. Hatred with love. By turning the other cheek. I don't know if you noticed in, in verse 13 of Genesis chapter 3. If you look into that again. It says, Then the Lord said to the woman, What is this that you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate it. You know, I realized something. Mas okay si Eve. Kay Adam. Not really, mas okay. Better half nga. Oh, for the mothers, a happy Mother's Day. <laughs> happy Mother's Day. You're the better half. Why? Adam, when he was confronted, where are you? Came out of Hughes. I hid. Right? When confronted with, with his excuse that he was <laughs> naked, he did not repent. When asked about his sin, did you eat? He blamed it on God. But kay Eve, walang ganun. Did you eat? I eat. Tapos, <laughs> ang ganda. Yes, I was deceived, but I eat. Because of that, if you, if, if you notice, ha, in, in, if you notice, kay, kay, um, kay, ad, kay, the serpent, it says, uh, because you have done this, right? Then ke Adam in verse 17, because you have listened to the voice of your wife, 
Pati Eve, walang, walang accusation. Walang sinabing because, because, because. Wala siyang excuse. Did you eat it? Yes, I ate. Now, we have to realize something here. <coughs> Confession and admission is not enough. Ito na yung problema naman ni Eve. She confessed, she admitted, but she did not repent. She said, I was ignorant, I was deceived. And the Bible keeps on saying that she was indeed deceived, but Adam was not deceived. But still, <clears throat> ignorance of the law excuses no one. And it's interesting also to note that in, in the verse that we, we read, the seed of the woman, right, will crush Satan. Typically, it's Typically, the seed is normally the seed of the man. The word seed there comes from the word sperma. Its seed is normally man. But yet, it was given now that, that privilege of being called... Um, some people think that the verse, verse 15 was the pronouncement of the coming of Christ. That one day, the seed will crush the serpent. But the, what I find interesting is that the seed was the seed of Eve. But Eve doesn't have a seed. But God gave it to her, I believe. Simply because what? She admitted her sins. She, no, she admitted that she has sinned. She did not confess though. That's why still there, are, <coughs> there is consequences to her, to her non-repentance. Non, uh, so in verse 16, it says, To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your pains in childbirth. Now, I don't know what's your Bible version. In NIV, I think NIV gives a better translation there. It says, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. <coughs> then, then it continues that... Um, uh, in pain you will bring forth children so some people ask oh, what's the difference in your pain your pain in childbirth and in pain you shall bring bring forth children honestly the first part is yeah, it's better to read it NIV I will make your pains in childbearing very severe now for women who who gave birth. Childbearing is really not painful. Ah. Because the, the word childbearing there is a merism. What that means is from conception until birth, there will be pains. But if you ask yourself, I don't know, it's not painful, right? Some. But what it means here is Throughout your pregnancy, you will be worried. Because the word pain there, the root word there is not physical pain, but emotional pain. The anxiety, the, the psychological and mental anguish that you experience while during that pregnancy. Will, will the baby be normal? Will, especially the time, will I survive? Diba sabi nga, at that time especially, when a, when a woman gives birth, one of her legs already is already in the grave. So there's an anxiety. I remember in my first child, I was telling myself, initially, I hope it's a boy, I hope it's a girl. I said, I, I, honestly, I don't care. As long as he's, he or she is normal, I'm happy. Now, fingers are complete, right? Feet are normal, nothing abnormal. And, and that's what it means there. That, you, that there will be anxiety throughout the pregnancy. Not only that, when giving birth, it will be painful. And we know that. Unfortunately, fortunately, now there is 
Sabi ko nga, the magic word is epidural. <laughs> right? Anesthesia. Um, and the second part says, yet your desire will be for your husband. What does that mean? Your desires will be for your husband. Now, the common, the common understanding there is that you will desire to rule over your husband. But another understanding for that is this. Woman will desire to have a husband. Because woman by nature wants to have children. Is what that means. I remember Bettina when she was about six years old and he was told by his brothers who liked squealing about the secrets of their sisters that Bettina said that when she grows up she wants to have three kids and she had, she had some names for the kids right but you know what I never heard that from my sons I never heard my son saying you know what when I grow up I'll have three kids and these are their names it's a woman's instinct a female's instinct. That's why I realize. Kaya pa lang may baby dal. Ang ang dalaro girl. <laughs> it's still a baby dal. The, the father can play the dal because they they will. But woman will have a desire for a husband because he needs the husband to fulfill her desire to become a mother. Kaya bahay bahay ang baby baby. Papenta yan na baby dal. <laughs> Because there is a desire. I remember um, my mom. One day, she went to church. I don't know if you were there, but when she came back, she said she saw a baby left in the church. And she wanted to adopt it. Oh, I can't imagine my dad saying, I saw a baby, I want to adopt it. <laughs> Mom, did you have that urge? <laughs> I don't think. I don't know, huh? But that is the thing here. That a woman will have the desire to, to fulfill, uh, uh, to have children. And because of that, he needs a man and desires a man. Because of that, the man now will rule over her. In order, I mean, because if you think of it, if you know... That childbearing will be anxious, will be filled with anxiety. And that by giving birth at that time, what means half of your body is ingrained. Why do you want a husband? Oh, it's because you want to have kids. That is the, and I, I see that. I'll be so upset if I see my two sons carrying baby dolls. <laughs> but I would feel so happy with my own baby doll bring me. <laughs> it's in their genes. Right? And now, all of this now will be a painful exercise for them. For, for, for every mother. Now, for the husband. In verse 17 it says, Then to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife. Again, there's a reason. Kay, kay, um, kay, kay Serpa, there's a reason. Kay Adam, there's a reason. Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and you have eaten from the tree about which I command you, saying, saying you shall not eat from it. He listened and obeyed. You know, problem with Adam. Eh. You shall not be able to curse is the ground because of you. In toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. <clears throat> all of a sudden, work will be very difficult. You know, even before the fall of the man, there was work. Cultivate and keep a Jew and rule. God gave man work. And it was not difficult. 
But now, work will be difficult. And I realize here, <clears throat> if you note, if you note in verse 17, then God, then to Adam, he said, because you have listened to the woman, voice of the woman, and have eaten from the tree by which I commanded you, you shall not eat from, what did it say? Curse is the ground because of you. But if you compare that in verse 14, ki serpent, because you have done this, curse are you. You know to me, just to me, that shows the continually the continuous love of God. He did not curse Adam. <coughs> In the serpent, he cursed the serpent. Here, he cursed the land. Nada may silan tuloy. And that's how I feel. God loved Adam so much that he couldn't curse <clears throat> him. Instead, curse the God. It's like if my son enters and becomes an addict. And I hope he does not. I pray he does not. I might curse the drug lord. I might curse the pushers, the <clears throat> dealers, his friends. Who influenced him. But I have a hard time cursing him. And I'll have a harder, the more I love my son, the more I'll have a hard time in cursing him. If I, if I, if I extremely love my son, I will not. But I will curse everybody around except him. But because, because deep in his heart, my heart, he is still tender to me. Both thorns and thistles it shall grow for you, and you will eat the plant of the field. By the sweat of your face, you will eat bread till you return to the ground. Because from it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. You know, this was not how it's supposed to go. Man was made in the image of likeness of God to have fellowship with God, to be with Him forever, and not to die. <clears throat> but now, from the ground that God said He would cultivate and keep to work and worship Him, from that ground, He would now have to toil day in and day out. He had to work. Sabi nga ni Job, is life really this hard? Do we really have to work? <clears throat> yes, it is the curse of God on the ground. All of a sudden, work has been, has become very extremely difficult for man as part of the curse. And here, because Eve, remember Eve, she came, she admitted her sins. Therefore what? God promised that the seed will come from her. The life, redemption. Yet to Adam who never admitted, he did not confess until nung, in, in, fact, in fact, blame God. What did God say? For you are dust and to dust shall you return. He now pronounced the death, the imminent death of Adam. Consuelo de Bobo sa akin yun eh. Eve, the seed will come from you. Adam, death was pronounced to you. From dust you came, and from dust you will <clears throat> return. Sin has altered everything. It altered the relationship between God and man. Because of greediness, because of selfishness, because of pride, because Adam wanted to become like God, Man sinned and caused chaos 
in the relationship of God and man. The problem today is this. We continue with our greediness. We continue with our selfishness. We continue with our pride. And now, our relationship with fellow man is in chaos. And unless you and I are willing to strike back the devil by showing love, by showing kindness, by showing forgiveness, by showing patience, our relationship around would be chaotic. We are called to be image bearers of God. We are redeemed. Every strike of the devil should be an opportunity to strike him back. A tragedy befalls your way, then glorify God. Use the very strike of the devil to win others to God. Let's not, let's not an eye for an eye. Binastos mo ko, babastosin kita. Whether you eat, whether you drink, whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Let us not allow the very nature that caused chaos in the relationship between man and God continue in our life today. Creating chaos between my relationship to the people around me. But may we use it to glorify God. The dust has done.